Hey guys, welcome to another quick heads up video. Uh, this product came out apparently two years ago. I missed it. Maybe you missed it as well. So in case you did, I'm just giving you a heads up. Ripcord. It's 100% free and it's from trackbout.com. Okay, 100% free, Windows or Mac. And this thing is amazing. It's really, really good. It is a, a chord generator and the best thing to my mind of this of this plugin is that it can load MIDI files of chord progressions and there are hundreds of thousands if not more chord progressions in MIDI file format out there for free on the internet I mean just look in in the presets here I went out and within 10 minutes I'd found all these chord progressions <laughs> loaded them in just by selecting them as a batch and they just install and that's only a fraction of the ones I found within five to ten minutes online free um, it comes with some basic presets which are these ones here um, major and minor chord progressions over an octave in all the different keys uh, over 12 semitones right anyway um, so I've got a I've got a preset loaded up here called major keys a there's the notes in blue you can see that in blue will it go bigger than that no right maximum size yep these blue notes are the trigger notes and these notes are gonna trigger some of those notes which will create chords <laughs> In, you know, in any way. Yeah, that kind of thing. Let's load up one a bit more. That's the straight, you know, that's major key A. Um, but look at the, I don't know what these, I don't do music theory, I've no idea what these progressions mean, but let's try that one. Now that isn't a trigger note, so. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Absolutely brilliant. Now, it's got some extra features. If you click this button in the middle there, these purple notes appear. And these are trigger notes that you can trigger by clicking on them with the mouse or from your master keyboard. And these will shift the resulting chords up or down from the root red note so that trigger notes remain the same but the resulting chord can be played up or down as many semitones as you want and mathematically it keeps the notes the intervals of the notes exactly right so I could bring it down the whole thing or we're up here and these trigger notes are as I said I think latching so you just need to tap with your master keyboard and it will shift everything to whatever you've set it to and this load of trigger notes can be shifted up or down your master keyboard so you can position them exactly where you want relative to your playing area and if you keep clicking they'll actually go up and above the trigger notes if you want them above and you want to play with your left hand or something okay so that's that that's fantastic there are other features. This plectrum is like strumming, yeah, where the notes become more and more and more separated the higher and higher you push this. And with this arrow thing here, with just the top purple arrow lit, then the notes will play ascending with the lowest note first followed by the others with a little gap between them or the more you push this up more and more and more of a gap. Subtle like this. or a big gap and you can click this and now the notes will play descending from top to bottom
And finally, with both arrows on, they'll play, uh, chords will play up first from lowest highest note and then down the next time, but only for notes triggering the same chords successively. So with these chords all being different, it will just keep strumming up the top arrow. But if I put notes on the same, it'll alternate playing up ascending from the bottom to the top note and then down for the next same chord and then up again. Which should do. Up, down, right? And that can be reversed. Boom, the final click reverses the arrows. They're both on, but now it's going to be descending first followed by ascending, but only for consecutive notes playing the same chord. And let's put it back to just ascending only, and you can add um, randomization to that, so that it's not always the same distance between notes. The more you push this up, the more that randomization happens. That's, that's that feature, absolutely fantastic. Not just for getting a bit more realism into playing the chords or the chords being triggered, but also if you're doing any type of uh, strumming instrument like acoustic guitars or something, you've got that feature. Another thing you've got is the velocity settings here. Let's just take these down. You can, the hammer gives you velocity. Uphill, let's put these. <laughs> different notes with the more I turn this up velocity gets more and more and more working up with the arrow the top arrow left to right means that velocity will start with the lowest notes loudest working up to the highest notes less and less loud right so basically if you have this in its default with the top ascending per purple arrow lit it just gives the bottom notes of chords the most emphasis But if you reverse it so it's descending, the higher notes will have the most emphasis. And you can have as much or as little as that you want. And there's a randomization which randomizes the velocities. So they're not strictly descending or ascending exactly with the same intervals of, of velocity. And again, you can have it in both directions but probably like the plectrum it only works where you're triggering consecutive chords the same now it should do bottom note loudest working up top note loudest working down alternating on these three chords Back to front. Let's add a bit of that um, strumming variation, let's call it. Yeah, good. it's all good stuff. Absolutely brilliant. And finally, the icing on the cake is it will actually record the output. You don't need an additional, like when I first set it up, because I don't like reading manners, I like to just dive straight in. I thought, oh, brilliant. Now, if if I capture those chords at the output, I can then find, edit them manually. And so I, in Logic, you can put MIDI plugins in, which modify MIDI notes coming in. Um, so you can put an arpeggiator and it'll, whatever. But I was using a third-party plugin, which I've shown already in previous videos, called MIDI FX Freeze, which captures MIDI output for things like arpeggiators or chord generators. But then I realised it's got its own record built in. So you hit record. Let's put this back to... Put 
something different like that. Um, when you hit record, it's primed and ready to go. Now you can play your master keyboard. The door doesn't have to be playing. You can play your master keyboard and it will capture your oh. pressing of the keys and the outputting chords at exactly the tempo you play. The door doesn't have to be running for it to do that. And it will record the tempo that you're playing at along with the, the notes as you hit them and, and record the resulting output chords as notes. But it will also record from the door. So it's in record, let's record these notes, uh, the chords being outputted from these notes rather. Here we go. There we go, hit stop and this box here is now illuminated red. The pattern is in there. Let me just get rid of that one and let's drag it out and have a look at it. And it's got the tempo information, but that came from the door and it's the same tempo still, so I don't need to import that. And there are the notes. Now you do get a little bit of spillage. Look, there's some, a little bit of spillage, some extra notes. Down. Just get rid of those. Now I've put this resulting um, chord region with all the notes of the actual output of chords. Oh, there's some more rogue notes there that got left over at the end. Um, it's, I put this pattern on the same track that rip chord is on, so any notes in these chords that are the same as the trigger notes will just re-trigger it. So if you do put the patterns, resulting patterns on the same track as rip chord, you need to turn that off so it doesn't get re-triggered by any of these notes. And this is what we've got now, that there are the chords. <laughs> And then you're going to manually tweak them, whatever you like. And it outputs everything. So if we were to add some variation like that in the timing of the playing with a bit of randomization and a bit of velocity working up um, and then record the output of that. Here we go. Uh, switch it on. Here we go. Uh, where's me? Oh yeah, sorry. The trigger notes are in this region here. Duh. Okay, here we go. Uh, it's on. Record. Here we go. Done. Hit stop. Drag the pattern, and you will see. You will see that it's captured all of these variable parameters in the resulting output notes. Look, look the offset notes, they're coming in one after the other, ascending. The velocity is loudest at the bottom to quietest at the top. There's a little extra note there. Yeah, it, it does it all. Oh, a bit loud now though. Let's just lower the relative velocity down of all of those. Oh, and turn this off so it doesn't re-trigger. Actually, the reason is it was re-triggering. That's why it was too loud. Oh, here we go. And of course, you can just add in your little licks. You know, I don't have any music theory, but I, I, here's a chord, and I can now add some overlay licks. Add an extra note to that. Let's have that note from there and let that one sustain across. Here we go. You know, so, man, it's fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. You can do all them little things like that. Yeah, super duper. So, other things. Um, you can put it into dark mode. 
really nice. Um, you can create a new preset from scratch, in which case you define a root note, name it the preset, define a root note, put in the notes of the chord you want. You can then, if you like, put in the next root note up or, or trigger note up, build a new chord from scratch or copy the chord you've already created by copying the trigger note, pasting it into the next semitone up or whole tone up and then modify the notes or whatever you like and build your own and then save it with a name you can do all that um, as I showed you already presets are in here uh, in, in, you can search for presets you've got favorites which you can star um, and you can import MIDI files which is just such a genius thing it just makes this so versatile so you go around and any preset you want you just star it and it's now in your favorites it can be retitled anytime you like. Um, also, another thing is, is while you're playing a pat, uh, while you have one of these loaded, you can star it from here, and it will now be a favourite in your in your favourites here. All right? Fantastic stuff. Uh, what else? You can um, obviously import MIDI files, which is how I got all those chord sequences in. You can export current MIDI, you can import a preset file because it'll load and export MIDI files, but it will also import preset files specifically for Ripcord and export them. And in community presets, if you click that, it takes you to a website where there is like a community sharing thing. People upload their chord progressions, share, and all the rest of it. So you can get into that whole thing, community sharing of presets of chord progressions that you've created or other people have created whatever you like fantastic stuff but again the key thing for me is that it, it does the midi files it loads the midi files which gives you access instantly and i do mean instantly <laughs> to hundreds of thousands of chord progressions um, after that you just have to go through them and figure out what they are title them appropriately so you can understand and remember what they are etc yeah fantastic stuff man this really is absolutely top banana and it is a hundred percent free hundred percent free yeah so that's that's about it really i mean oh and the, see the pattern is still stored in there it'll be there until i double click record button bob and now it's empty that record slot is empty now yeah um i don't know how i missed this as i said it came out a couple of years ago but if you didn't know about it you do now it's 100 percent free windows or mac um i'll put a link in the description to some relevant links um one of which is a video from trackbout showing you in a very easy to understand way how to install and set up ripcord in all of the different doors and i do mean pretty much all of them the only one missing i could see was cubase actually um they show you that in video format and then they show you some the features again in video format and also leave links to their website uh, page where there is actually a written manual as well and things like that all right I hope that's useful um, so there you go uh, please subscribe uh, stick on the old notifications I haven't done any videos since Christmas to be honest because I've gone back to having to work on the website it's I just took some time off last year at the end of the year and i just need to get back to it because i want to try and start to launch pages in march so i'll do another little video maybe tomorrow or tonight showing you the progress there just for those few people that are interested but it's starting to look good man it's it's coming on really good um right there you go ripcord uh i'll see you for more videos soon